Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is September 11th, and right now we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery. Pacific Northwest to the upper right, Hawaiian Islands to the bottom left. There's the Pacific Ocean. Here is our slow-moving storm system, still centered across eastern Oregon, Idaho, and Montana. Additional round of thunderstorms here today and tomorrow. You get some of that wraparound moisture potentially making its way back towards places like Spokane as we go through the day today as the system continues its very slow trek off to the east. Then we turn our eyes out over the Pacific Ocean. It looks more like a fall frontal system out there. Got some cold air behind it across the Gulf of Alaska. This will be making its way towards the Pacific Northwest and we'll take a look at what we can expect from that and what's going to be coming here as we go through the extended forecast. Lightning strikes yesterday. A few thunderstorms across the Cascades of Washington, Oregon, but look at eastern Oregon. Plentiful amounts of lightning. Man, what a show yesterday. Southeast Washington, northeast Washington as well. Portions of Idaho, Idaho Panhandle also getting in on the action yesterday. But man, what a bunch of lightning strikes. There are probably hundreds, if not thousands, of strikes right across eastern Oregon. And this is going to be the case again today for some areas. We'll take a look at the latest on that here in a moment. Also dealing with some smoke still across the region, even though We've been getting some of this rainfall coming for some areas. Washington has not been faring as well as places like Oregon. And then you can kind of see that smoke is still out there. People are still dealing with surface smoke. So hopefully we can help to start to put out these fires here over the next few weeks and bring some more troughs in here and get rid of the smoke once and for all as we start to change seasons. Thunderstorm outlook today. Again, Oregon, Idaho, western Montana, portions of Washington as well. If you go further off east of the Rockies, you're looking at a marginal and risk of, and even a slight risk of some wind and some hail with some of those thunderstorms across portions of eastern Montana. So let's take a look at the drought monitor here. We got a new update here. So this is where we were as of last week and we scrolled through here and you see we took away some of that extreme drought across southwest Montana. We added a little bit uh, areas further north and then we scroll on in through portions of western Montana. A little bit added there, a little bit added across portions of Washington towards Spokane. Now in some extreme drought. We head off across Oregon. We did remove some of that severe drought out uh, near Pendleton there, at least the Pendleton forecast office. And we scroll through Western Washington looking for changes. We did remove some of the severe for portions of Northwest Oregon there as well. So some areas upgraded, some areas downgraded and still locked in some pretty severe and extreme drought here across the region. Also looking at sea surface temperature anomaly. So this is what is relative to normal. And you can see the blob, is it returning here? Hopefully not, but this can really bump up some of the overnight temperatures as especially as well. This can also add some energy to some storms here with upper level lows. It can create a little bit more additional cape and maybe a little bit stronger systems as it moves towards the region when this blob does exist here. But again, it would bring up some of the overnight lows. And if you move off in towards the winter season, it would likely cut down on some of the snowfall we would be seeing, especially in the lower elevations. And if we look at oceanic temperature, just the temperature itself, you'd still see, I mean, you're not going to go out to the coastline and expect to get warm water or anything along the Washington or Oregon coast, but it's definitely above normal for this time of year. Cold water current comes down out of the north here. That's why that cold water extends down across Southern California. It's also why places like California don't usually get hurricanes. If they do move off that warmer water, they start to degrade quite rapidly before they make landfall. Now, looking at 500 millibars, this is where we are right now, our slow moving trudging system, just very reluctantly moving off to the east. We get a little bit of this ridging here. I saw some fog out there this morning for some areas and we scroll on in through this weekend and we start to go through Sunday and we start to get some rainfall for western Washington and western Oregon. This one again looks like it's targeting Oregon a little bit better with that rainfall here. I'll show you that more on that here in a moment. Another ridge tries to build in here as we go through next week with some decent temperatures out there, comfortable weather as we move through the month of September. September. And then another system wants to swing through and it'll probably kick things back on shore if we do turn, briefly turn offshore. We'll look at that here more in a moment. But again, we're, we're not setting up any huge heat dome by any stretch of the imagination. And we are keeping some of these troughs coming through there. But I would like to see more precipitation out of some of these systems for the state of Washington, no doubt. Now, lightning flash density potential. Let's look at what the high resolution model has to say. And we'll scroll through the day to day. Here we go. You can see them pop up again across eastern slopes of the Oregon. Cascades, Eastern Oregon, especially Northeastern Oregon, right there across some of the higher terrain, really putting on a show again today. We go through the overnight hours into Friday. Let's see what it shows. Some additional thunderstorm activity across Eastern Oregon, but definitely not as widespread as what we dealt with yesterday or what's going to happen today. And then the Idaho Panhandle potentially under some of that as well. And we go into Saturday morning before that system is finally crawling off to the east. 
Now, taking a wider look at things, this is a North American view of the dynamic tropopause potential temperature. And you can see that the cold air, of course, is locked up across the northern portion, across the North Pole there. And what what's known here as the battleground between the colder air and the warmer air across the equatorial regions is where we get these mid-latitude cyclones. And that's where the jet stream tends to set up. And kind of what points at us a lot of the season as we go through fall and winter in the Pacific Northwest. So there's our upper level low here. And you can kind of see it pushing off to the east there's the weekend frontal system and then you can kind of see the ridge building in the wake of that and then what's this next frontal system going to do uh, yet to be determined but we'll be watching it here over the next couple of days and see what it wants to bring and this is a northern hemisphere look and again i mentioned the boundary between the colder air you know across the polar regions here versus the equatorial regions and that's where the jet stream sets up across the mid latitudes and you can kind of see that if i put that into motion over a 15 day loop and you can kind of see the subtropical jet stream down there working as well this is what's known as the polar jet stream now here we go let's see what is to come here as we go through the day today i want to highlight this as well the european does show some thunderstorm potential today across the washington cascades up into portions of uh, extreme southeastern british columbia idaho montana and eastern oregon again the main target here is we go through the day today now we scroll through the overnight hours into friday morning and we start to look at what is to come you can see the frontal system starting to approach here and impact Vancouver Island, some of Western BC Friday afternoon, maybe clipping Southeast Washington. But again, some additional thunderstorms are possible. It does show a couple popping off across the Oregon Cascades as well on the afternoon Friday. And then we go on in through Saturday and you can see that wraparound moisture, that low is finally kicking off the east, but it does kick off still some showers across some of the higher terrain of Idaho and Montana. Then we turn our eyes to this next frontal system. You can see it's losing some of its punch by the time it gets to us on Sunday morning, some rain fall for Vancouver Island. We go through the day on Sunday. It starts to come in across Oregon, Washington. Not much for Seattle. It does show some precipitation, but again, it's not a lot across Washington State. I wish that one was going to bring a little bit more here, but what can you do? Mother Nature calls the shots, and then the next system starts to approach as we go on in through Tuesday night. We'll see what that one has in store for us over the next few days. So a little bit of an interesting flip here. As I look at the 15-day precipitation anomaly on the artificial intelligence, it does show a bump here for some above normal as we go towards the end of month of September. So let's hope that this is a trend for sure because the European as of yesterday afternoon really still doesn't quite show that and neither does the GFS. This was you know last night's run there. So uh, GFS has 30 ensemble members and you can see for example for Seattle Metro it does show some precipitation showing up but this is not a slam dunk with the system that's coming in on Sunday. The control run does show two tenths of an inch and that would help water your yard. Now looking at Seattle as far as a fantasy windstorm hunt you can see that uh, there's like one out here and one ensemble member. So we're not looking at any kind of windstorm, but this front looks like it may be a little bit blustery, but again, some of the ensemble members don't show much. The control run actually has 34 miles per hour. So that may get your attention for a bit. It could bring down some branches and whatnot, but uh, that shouldn't be too big of a deal overall. Everything considered should not be too big of a deal. And here's Portland. That's uh, that initial frontal system there. The mean is right around two tenths of an inch or so. Then things become much more muddy as you look off into the future and total precipitation over the next six days i'll scroll through this quickly and again you can see not much for seattle like bellingham and everett we're not looking at a lot of precipitation better amounts across portions of oregon over the next six days now two meter max temperature as we go through the day today you can see nice comfortable temperatures out there nothing too hot really some warmer temperatures up into the okanagan river valley getting up towards the upper 80s we go through friday saturday sunday i mean saturday's a nice day there look at seattle maybe mid and upper 70s for some locations some 80s for the willamette valley and we go Sunday as that frontal system is pushing in. We're going to cool things down across the area. You can kind of see that reflected. We suppress the temperatures. There's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Start to warm back up a little bit next week as another ridge tries to build in before a potential another frontal system after that. And looking at the extended forecast, you can still see we can be warm at times at this time of year. Even into early October, you can get some decent temperatures. And even mid-October, I mean, you can get some decent days. But you can see the overall gradual trend downward as we move on in towards the fall season and if we look at the 46 day precipitation anomaly on yesterday's european extended run it's not a good look there for western portions but you take that with a grain of salt six to ten day above normal really for the entire lower 48 there's the mixed bag here across the pacific northwest as we go through the mid portion of september eight to 14 day there as well something similar also and yeah check out the patreon page if you want i put my daily
daily updates here. It looks like I am past the hack now. I have total control of all the channels. I can make changes. I can sign in on all devices. It took 35 days and I probably should make a video just so I can store all the data because I know I will quickly try to forget this entire mess. <laughs> but um, yeah, th there's some things that YouTube did pr that were okay. And there were some things that I think that they could improve on for sure. And I should probably just go over things. I found some extremely useful things of what to do and what not to do if you are trying to recover an account. So I probably should go ahead and do that. We'll see how that goes if I have time to do that here over the next couple of days. But anyway, I hope you guys are having a good day. We'll do this all again tomorrow and I will talk to you guys then.